For where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people shall be my people. And your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried. Tay, it's so hard to believe the day we've waited for for the past year is finally here. Caleb, I can't believe our day is finally here. The day we've dreamed of since I was a little girl watching Disney movies on VHS. Dreaming about how my happily ever after would be and who would turn out to be my Prince Charming. What is amazing to me is that from the very moment that I first met you, you became my Prince. Not only are you handsome, kind, and have a killer singing voice, but you also made me feel like the most beautiful princess. We've really waited for this for six years, and in every way I know you're my person. We've grown together, and I've learned so much about you and about each other. I cannot imagine life being any better without you. Growing up, I got asked a lot of questions as to why I never liked anyone or dated anyone through school. My answer was always, I'm waiting for God to send me my husband. I prayed and trusted in God regardless of what everyone else told me. And then I met you, a 16-year-old boy in chorus class. I didn't have the slightest clue that you were on this planet. Never mind the idea that you would have had a crush on me. Oh, but little did I know, what is even crazier to me is that when I look at you today, I still see that handsome, shy, goofy choir boy who dances with me. You were my first real crush, my first boyfriend. You were my first kiss, my first dance, my first love, and you will always and forever be my first and my last. Love you forever, it's you and me. I'm excited to meet you at the altar today and begin this new chapter. The chapter is going to be full of love, laughs, and plenty of trips to Target. Thank you for being my person. Thank you for loving me as I am. You've made me a better man, and I promise to love you forever and always. I'll see you soon, and I can't wait to see my wife. The first union in all of Scripture was Adam and Eve in the garden. Later in Genesis, it says that God created man and placed him in the garden. Then he put the man to sleep and created the woman from the man's rib. God felt the need to create the woman because Adam needed to help her. God did not see fit for man to be alone. At this time, Adam said, This is bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. Therefore man shall leave his father and his mother, and become one with his wife. From this point forward, Taylor and Caleb must become one flesh, forsaking all others to be wholly committed to each other. This day marks a transition in which each of you take on new priorities, and will leave certain chapters of your life behind. Everything in your world will be different from this moment on, and your focus must be on each other. The unity of marriage is ordained by God, and thus should be entered into with God and His love as the essence of your relationship. No man is worthy of leading a wife if he is not first led by God. And likewise, no woman is worthy of loving a man if she does not first love God and follow in God's guidance. This shall serve as a challenge for you when things are good and when things are not. I urge you to remember that you are united as one by God. In Proverbs 3, 3 and 4. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart and you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. The ceremony of marriage in which you two celebrate today is the first ceremony and the oldest kind of ceremony in the entire world. Correctly regarded, marriage is the highest and the happiest of all human relationships. It's the preserver of true love. It's also the foundation of the home. And it's also one thing that we forget often, it's also the strength of society. The scriptures teach us that marriage should be held in honor among all. It's the blending of two hearts as one. And in perfect unity, those two hearts, if it is one now, give praise to God. Your marriage must stand, not by the authority of the state, nor the seal on your wedding certificate but by the strength of your love and by the power of your faith in God and each other. With God, 
you'll have everything you need to make this marriage work. Without him, you won't have anything. Taylor, I promise to take you to Target at least once a month. I promise to take you to every zoo and every aquarium we can find, to always hang Christmas lights with you, no matter whether I want to or not. I promise to always rub your back if you've had a long day, and even if you haven't. And I promise to always wash dishes. You heard that. <laughs> I promise to always decorate for Christmas and buy us matching pajamas. I promise to always sing along with Dolly Parton on car rides. I promise to always complain about your feet. I promise to make you brush and floss your teeth every single night. I promise to pray for you every day. I promise to love you on the mountains and in the valleys. And I promise you that it will always be you and me. Father in heaven, it is indeed an honor to be here today. And Lord, I thank you for these two precious souls that have made this lifelong commitment, this wonderful commitment to each other. And Lord, I thank you for the hearts that they have for one another. As a grown man, I understand, Lord, there'll be challenges that they'll face. God, I know that your love is strong enough to hold, hold them through it. God, I pray that you'd give them the grace and the mercy to walk with you every day. Even back when Taylor was little, Lord, I didn't know who I was praying for. But now I do. And I thank you, Lord, that you've given her such a godly man. And God, we just pray your blessings upon the remainder of this day. Lord, we're going to have a good time. It's a time of happiness. It's a time of joy. Lord, we know that there's rejoicing and these two hearts coming together. We're going to do that. Pray you give us the grace, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may now kiss your bride. Fine. <laughs> I now introduce to you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Caleb Watkins. I sat out on the porch swing, talking to your mom about how much our love has grown and how far we have come I stepped inside the house and sat next to your dad holding my breath and not thinking twice this is what I said I want to marry your daughter and give her the very best I thank God each and every day
dancing with my wife. I'm dancing with my wife. If I'm honest, I don't know who I am. All I see is a man who's waiting for a wake up call. So won't you touch this heart that doesn't have a song to sing and sing it to me? Sing it to me. better at everything I have ever tried and failed to be. 